that's going on. Well, um, in in uh, in the Soviet Union, you you've got a different sort of um, uh, use of photographic <coughs> imagery and collage and montage. So this is by Rodchenko. Do some of you do people know about? It? Who knows about Rodchenko? Oh yeah, everybody. Um, and he was part of a movement called Russian Constructivism. And, uh, and they were in probably the most, most optimistic art movement, that, and the last optimistic art movement in the sense of uh, in the 20th century, because they believed in the Russian Revolution, and they believed their art should um, be part of the Russian Revolution. And uh, so he believed that he should make work um, that was reproduced on very cheap things. Like th these are uh, uh, detective <coughs> novels. They're like they're like penny dreadful detective novels. He didn't want to just to do it into the high art places. Um, so he found a way to, to connect typography, um, photography, and, and graphic imagery to bring those three elements together and produce these very dynamic compositions, which aren't about the sort of chaos of Dada, they're more about this idea of people constructing society, you know, that you can see the sort of diagonals, it's, it's got a sense of you actually being able to change um, society, and um, they, there was a movement that made films, they made, they had a train that was painted, called the Ajit Prop train that went through Russia with imagery, um, they produced floats for uh, uh, um, carnivals and demonstrations, and that, that they wanted their work. I mean, he, he designed sweet papers. He designed workers' clothes, um, workers' uh, um, offices. Uh, they didn't believe an artist was an elite person, and um, and it, it all got uh, um, sort of shut on from my from by Stalin in the sort of later 1920s. Who, who believed that art should be imposing itself on people rather than it being about cons people constructing their own reality. So, this is by an artist called the Other Sitsky, and you can see it at the top is the sort of thing that Stalin was into, um, which is people looking out, you know, lovingly at their tractors out there and all that sort of thing, the sort of realism of that time. And, and it's an interesting picture, this one, because I think the bottom half shows what uh, the artist was more interested in, which is a sort of abstraction of shape and dynamism. But um, some of the artists didn't kowtow to Stalin, and they um, uh, stopped making work. Some committed suicide. Some tried to, rep to do both together, like in this one, or people had different strategies, you know, it became very, very dangerous to make a constructivist art. So, um, <coughs> I, started, I studied all that stuff after art school, because they didn't actually show me any of that at art school, it wasn't, it wasn't seen as being art, it was uh, seen as being about politics um, at that time. Uh, and then I found a writer called Walter Benjamin. Uh, has anybody heard of Walter Benjamin? Oh yeah, yeah. He's an amazing writer um, who, who, who all his work was anti, anti-fascist, even if it was a very theoretical piece of work. And he, he was a, a, a Jewish writer in the, in the 1930s, at the same time as Hartfield. And uh, he sort of theorized what montage was all about and worked with a, a writer called Bertolt Brecht to, to um, actually talked about the fact that, I mean, one of the things that Brecht said was that a, a mere photograph of a factory, the Crook factory, which was an armaments factory, uh, doesn't tell you what that factory is producing. And it, it doesn't talk about the social relations in the factory. So something must be set up, um, something must be uh, artificially set up and, and that's the basis of montage, that you artificially set up something to reveal what's going on in society. And Benjamin, uh, uh, as I say, wrote a lot about this, and wrote a, lot, uh, a piece called The Short History of Photography, which is a very crucial piece of work about 
the influence <coughs> about the influence of um, uh, the reproduction of images. That's why this is a montage I did for the Guardian in some in the 1990s, and it's got <coughs> lots of Mona Lisa's, <coughs> and also got one of a bit of a sentence by Benjamin smashing a swastika. Um, and uh, Benjamin wrote about um, uh, an essay called The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction, <coughs> which talked about how reproduction of images made the original lose their aura. And a lot of the ideas of uh, teaching into a popular culture and, um, have come from Benjamin, and uh, his sort of insights into how mechanization um, and the sort of drenching in society of images was actually affecting people 